All right, now that you've signed up for Reflection Go and you have the app installed on your Quest, the next few episodes will dive into the metaverse and explore Reflection Go. You'll hear from me along the way, but primarily you'll be hearing from Reflection's own built-in virtual coach. The cool thing is that once you're subscribed and you're in the app for yourself, virtual coach will explain cognitive training to you along the way, adjust difficulties on the fly in order to keep you in flow state, and even give you daily and weekly training goals personalized for your sport and position. All right, so we're in our quest. Now we'll um, look for the Reflection app. And here we are, welcome to our gym. Welcome to Reflection Go. I'm Reflection's virtual coach. Let me show you around. Cognitions bridge the gap between what your eyes see and the decisions you make in your game. These cognitions can be measured and trained. Your performance rankings let you know how you stack up against the competition and also affects the training I will give you. Click eye hand coordination to begin an assessment and see where you stand. In case you were wondering, that is the voice of virtual coach. Eye hand Here we're, we're starting our first assessment. So we'll be assessing eye hand coordination there. We always start with an assessment before training because you can't move what you can't measure. So what we'll do is we'll take a baseline and then later we'll work on improving that skill. Coordination is the ability to coordinate visual information with manual dexterity and motor skills. Using both controllers, use the black balls to hit each target as fast as possible. Your score is the average time it took you to get from one target to the next. Nice work. We know that wasn't easy. Our research shows that it takes five attempts for new users to achieve a good baseline on each cognition. We'll try that four more times in order to get you ramped up. Don't worry, you won't have to do this next time you assess this cognition. So you'll do this four more times in order to establish a really strong baseline. But for now, we'll just speed through that. Nice job. Here's how you stack up. Try again if you need, otherwise return to dashboard to continue. So when we're measuring eye-hand coordination, what we're measuring is how much time does it take you to respond to each target? And that's going to be on the, on the order of milliseconds. Here you can see that this score of 366 milliseconds is, is pretty good. It's actually a top performing score, which is in the top 25th percentile on this graph. So the graph is showing you on the Left side, those are longer response times because longer response time is less good than a shorter response time, right? You wanna be quicker. We also tell you, if you click on the little eye up top, we'll tell you again why eye-hand coordination is important for your sport. Now that you've completed your first assessment, let's talk goals. Your training is personalized when you train with Reflection Go. We use your performance rankings to focus on your opportunities to improve and adjust your goals based on the impact each cognition has on your game and position. Unlock more cognitions to personalize your goals and keep your streak alive by completing each weekly session. You can reach a goal each day by unlocking a cognition or training drill. In the future, your goals will be time-based. Start with your controllers in the home bases. You'll notice the bases will turn green, starting the assessment. Targets will begin to launch at the right or left rings at random. Use the side's corresponding controller to prevent the blue targets from advancing through while allowing the ones that turn orange to pass. After each target, make sure both controllers are back in the home bases. If they're not, the assessment will pause. Your score is the least amount of time you need to avoid hitting a target that turns orange. To find it, the assessment must give you some that are too hard for you. So don't worry about the misses. Just do the best you can. And this reactive inhibition concept is a little difficult for people to grasp. There are really two kinds of inhibition. Inhibition is your ability to stop a motor action that you've already started. So if I'm reaching and I get new information that I need to stop, then I'm stopping that action or just not starting at all. So the, the former, is called proactive inhibition, where I'm seeing a, sig a signal. You could think of this like a, um, a stoplight that's just red or green with, with no yellow. So I go or I don't go, right? And then there's reactive inhibition, which is much more prevalent in sports, where I'm starting to make a motor action, but then there's some new information that tells me, no, I need to stop. They're trying to fake me out or something like that. 
and then I'm going to stop my action. So that's what we're training here. And that's why you're always going to reach for the blue target. And when it's orange, you're getting out of the way. Anticipation is the ability to predict what will happen based on what you see. As fast as you can, accurately predict whether the moving projectile will make contact with the pulsing target by using the top B or Y button on either controller to predict a miss, and the lower A or X button on either controller to predict a hit. Your score is the average response time divided by your correct percentage. Mental flexibility is the ability to switch between different tasks or strategies in response to changing demands or conditions. Mental flexibility is basically your ability to switch rules, right? So this happens in any team sport where you're moving from offense to defense in the transitions. Using the A button on your right controller to select the right shape or the X button on your left controller to select the left shape. Choose the matching characteristic indicated by the rule above as fast as possible. Your score will be your average response time divided by the percentage you were correct. Reaction time is a measure of how quickly one can process information and initiate a motor response. Dismiss each target as fast as possible by tapping the A button on your right controller or the X button on your left controller. No need to hit the targets in this assessment. So now that we've completed all of the assessments, let's do a recap. We've got eye-hand coordination, inhibition, mental flexibility, anticipation, and simple reaction time. So in recap, on our dashboard here, we've got our performance rankings, which are how we stack up against all other athletes in each cognition. We've got our daily goals, which are individualized cognition goals that have been personalized for us. And then we have our weekly sessions here as well, where we can keep track of how many more sessions we have in the week. This should correspond to how many times we're training for our sport. So you wanna to try to do some amount of cognitive training every time you're training for your sport. And then lastly on the right, we've got our personal best. So every time you train in competition mode, we keep track of your top score in that drill so that you can challenge your friends, challenge yourself and keep setting new records. Now that we've set a baseline for performance in each cognition, we're ready to start training. We'll check back here later to see how we're progressing. Catch you in part four.